people of Africa. Almost 500 million people live in Africa and its population is unevenly distributed. More people live along the coast, the highlands of eastern Africa and the Nile River Valley than in the dense forests and the desert areas. The people of Africa can be divided into four different groups. The dark-skinned native Africans live to the south of Sahara Desert. Distinct groups among the natives are pygmies, bushmen and the Maasai. Arabs who came to Africa in the 7th century live in the northern Africa. The Indians, taken by the British in the late 1800s to work in the plantations, live mainly in South Africa and East Africa. Today, the Indians form an important section of the business community. The Europeans who first came to Africa as explorers, established colonies and eventually became rulers. The Maasai, natives of East Africa, are a warrior clan who make a living by hunting. They are also among the tallest people in the world. The pygmies living in the thickest part of the Congo Basin are among the shortest people in the world. They have no permanent dwellings and their houses are made of branches, twigs and leaves. More than 800 languages are spoken in Africa. Swahili is one language that is spoken by millions of Africans, while other languages are spoken by only a few hundred people. French and English are widely spoken because France and Britain controlled large areas of Africa. The Bushmen who have lived in the Kalahari Desert for at least 11,000 years are one of the few groups of hunters, gatherers left in Africa. The Kalahari stretches from the Zambezi River in north to Orange River in the south and is a vast sandy plain with few low rocky hills. The names Bushmen and Hottentots given by the European colonists have now become unacceptable due to their negative meaning. Now, they are known as the San or the Khoisan. The Bushmen are nomads moving from one place to another in search of food, insects, edible plants and roots, fruits, nuts and hunting small animals for delicacies. They do not grow crops or rare cattle. Only men hunt. They excel in their tracking skills, knowledge of environment and animal behavior. They hunt large antelope for both its skin and meat while smaller animals like hares, porcupines, ostriches and guinea fowl are mainly hunted for their meat. They divide their catch after the hunt. The Bushmen live in small independent groups comprising of a husband, wife and their dependent children so that they can meet the requirement of food and water from the difficult environment. They wear bare minimum clothes due to hot conditions. They live in a light, semicircular structure made of branches, twigs and thatched grass, which they can abandon when they move. In front is a half where food is prepared. The nomads have very limited possessions like clothes which they wear, some personal belongings kept in skin bags, their weapons, implements for gathering and equipment for processing food. Most of their needs were met from the environment. Arrow and spear shafts, bows, sticks, fire drills, mortars, dishes and musical instruments were made from wood. Arrowheads, spear blades, pipes and knives were made from bones, later from metal obtained from trade. Stone was used to sharpen arrow and spear edges for grinding food and polishing. Tortoise and ostrich eggshells were used as ladles, water containers and storages and rope was obtained from shredded bark. European colonization of South Africa between 18 to 20th century 
led to major changes. The Bushmen lost control over natural resources. Many were killed in warfare and due to diseases such as smallpox. Some were incorporated into nearly all levels of society throughout Southern Africa, while others assumed semi-independent pastoral existence. Since the 1990s, some people of Khosian origin are asserting new forms of identity to revive their cultural heritage. Life in the desert is not easy. Only those children and adults who are physically strong survive the harsh environment. In the sandy and dry desert, water is a precious resource and is used very carefully. People settle down in the oases where water is available, making cultivation possible. Every inch of the land is used to grow as much food as possible. At ground level, grains and vegetables are grown. Then at a little higher level, fruit trees are grown. And the topmost level is made up of date palm. In summers, rice, millet, maize, and some sugarcane and cotton are grown, while in winter, the same land is used for growing wheat, barley, oilseed, onion, beans, and lentils. Most of the farming is done manually using simple tools like sickle and wooden plow. Water obtained from the wells is drawn by animals by means of water wheels and emptied into the irrigation canals finally reaching the fields. Animals reared are water buffaloes, oxen, donkeys, camels, sheep and goats. The houses are simple and built to protect against the heat during the day, the cold at night and sand and dust at all times. Made of sun-dried bricks, the walls are thick, the windows are small and the roofs are flat to collect rainwater during occasional showers. The oases form trading places for the nomads. Pitched tents act as marketplaces to trade cattle, hides, and carpets for necessities like grains and dates. The date palm is one of the oldest and most important tree of the desert. Dates are nutritious, that is, they contain sugar, protein, fat, and minerals can be eaten fresh, cooked or ground and pressed into cakes. Considered as perfect food, they can be kept for a long time and are shipped to markets all over the world. Their seeds are crushed and fed to animals and goats. The leaf stalks are woven into bags and mats, while its fiber is made into ropes. Date palms planted at the edge of the oasis protect the farm from the drying sandy winds blowing across the desert. Egypt, known as the gift of the River Nile, is 96% desert except the Nile Valley. This source of life-sustaining water makes cultivation possible and is responsible for the growth of early civilization. Around 95% of Egypt's population lives along the Nile Valley and it is one of the most densely populated areas in the world. The Nile rises in Lake Victoria near the equator and flows northwards. Its most important tributary, the Blue Nile, joins it at Sudan, and the Khartoum, the White Nile, and Blue Nile meet to form the River Nile. It forms the second largest delta in the world after Ganga Brahmaputra and it empties into the Mediterranean Sea. As a perennial river, the Nile floods every year, making the land fertile and causing agriculture to become the most important occupation. The Nile Valley farmers, or Fellahin, have small farms, about one hectare, and intensively cultivate land to give maximum yield. Cotton is the most important crop occupying 40% of cultivated land. Other crops include rice, maize, millet, beans, sugarcane, dates and vegetables. 
The mud walled houses are well suited for the hot climate and the roofs are flat. The diet of Fellahin is made up of maize flour and a dish of beans called full. People wear loose flowing robes and turbans to protect against the heat. Irrigation in the Nile Valley happens in two ways. Basin irrigation occurs when from June to September the Nile floods its basin and after the flood subsides, crops are planted in the wet. However, this allows only crop to be cultivated each year. For perennial irrigation, dams are built at Asut, Aswan and Senar to store water. This water flows into the fields through irrigation canals. By this system, two or three crops can be cultivated in a year. Other traditional methods used for irrigation are the shadu, that is, long poled device with heavy weighted stone at one end, which balances a bucket of water at the other. Sakya, that is, a water wheel worked by an animal, and the Archimedean screw, that is, a helix inside the wooden cylinder that spirals water upward by turning the handle. The water obtained is then allowed to flow into shallow-cut irrigation canals, which lead into fields. 